The Book of La'an Sahl ibn Sa'd al-Sa'di narrated that Uwaymir al-Ajlani came to Asim ibn Adi al-Ansari and said to him, O oh Asim, what do you think? If a man finds a man with his wife, should he kill him and be killed by them in return, or what should he do? O oh Asim, ask the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about that for me. So Asim asked the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, did not like this question, and he criticized it so much that Asim felt very upset by what he heard from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. When Asim went back to his family, Awaymer came to him and said, O oh Asim, what did the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, say to you? Asim said to Awaymer, You did not bring me any good. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, did not like the question that I asked him. Awaymer said, By Allah, I will not rest until I ask him about it. So Awaymer went to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, who was amidst the people, and he said, O Messenger of Allah, what do you think, if a man finds another man with his wife, should he kill him and be killed by them in return, or what should he do? The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Verses have been revealed concerning you and your wife, so go and bring her. Sah said, They engaged in La'an, and I was among the people who were with the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. When they had finished, Uwaymer said, O Messenger of Allah, I would be a liar if I kept her now. So he divorced her three times before the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, could tell him to do anything. Ibn Shihab said, Then that became the practice for those who engaged in La'an. Sahl ibn Sa'd al-Ansari narrated that Umaymir al-Ansari, one of Banu al-Ajlan, came to Asim ibn Adi, and he quoted a hadith like that of Malik, number 3743, and he added into the hadith, his leaving her after that became the practice of those who engaged in La'an. And he added, Sahl said, she was pregnant, so her son was named after her. Then it became the practice that he could inherit from her, and she could inherit from him the shares decreed by Allah. Ibn Juraj narrated, Ibn Shihab told me about the two who engaged in La'an, and what is done in this case. Based on the hadith of Sahl ibn Sa'd, the brother of Banu Sa'idah, according to which a man from among the Ansar came to the Prophet peace be upon him and said, O Messenger of Allah, what do you think of a man who finds another man with his wife? And he mentioned the same hadith number 3743, and added, So they engaged in La'an in the masjid, and I was present. And he said in the hadith, Then he divorced her three times before the Messenger of Allah peace be upon him could tell him to and he divorced her in front of the Prophet peace be upon him. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Every couple who engage in La'an are to be separated. It was narrated that Sa'id ibn Jubair said, I was asked about the couple who engage in La'an. During the governorship of Mus'ab, should they be separated? He said, I did not know what to say, so I went to the house of Ibn Umar in Mecca, and I said to the slave, Ask for permission for me to enter. He said, He is taking a nap. But he heard my voice and said, Ibn Jubair? I said, Yes. He said, Come in, for by Allah it can only be some need that has brought you at this hour. So I went in, and I saw him resting on a blanket, reclining on a pillow that was stuffed with palm fibers. I said, Abu Abdurrahman, should a couple who engage in La'an be separated? He said, Subhanallah, yes, the first one to ask about this was so and so, the son of so and so. He said, O Messenger of Allah, what do you think if one of us finds his wife committing an immoral action? What should he do? If he speaks, he will be speaking of a serious matter, and if he keeps quiet, he will be keeping quiet about an equally serious matter. The Prophet peace be upon him remained silent and did not answer him. Then he came to him after that and said, I have been afflicted with what I asked you about. Then Allah revealed these verses in Surat An-Nur, and for those who accused their wives. Surat An-Nur, chapter 24, from verse 6 to verse 9. He, peace be upon him, recited them to him, and exhorted and admonished him, 
and told him that the punishment in this world was lighter than the punishment in the hereafter. He said, No, by the one who sent you with the truth, I am not lying about her. Then he, peace be upon him, called her and exhorted and admonished her, and told her that the punishment in this world was lighter than the punishment in the hereafter. She said, No, by the one who sent you with the truth, he is lying. He told the man to start the process of li'an, so he testified four times, by Allah, that he was telling the truth, and the fifth time, that the curse of Allah would be upon him if he was lying. Then he, peace be upon him, told the woman to testify. She testified four times by Allah that he was lying, and the fifth time that the wrath of Allah would be upon her if he was telling the truth, then he separated them. Sa'id ibn Zubayr said, At the time of Mus'ab ibn Zubayr, I was asked about the two who engaged in la'an, and I did not know what to say. So I went to Abdullah ibn Umar and I said, Do you think that two who engage in la'an should be separated? Then he mentioned a hadith like that of Ibn Umayr, number 3746. It was narrated that Ibn Umar said, The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said to the two who engaged in la'an, Your reckoning is with Allah. One of you is lying. You have no rights over her. He said, O Messenger of Allah, my property which I gave her? He said, You have no right to it. If you are telling the truth about her, it is in return for having been intimate with her, and if you are lying about her, they you have even less right to it. Zuhair said in his report, Sufyan ibn Amr told us that he heard Sa'id ibn Jubayr say, I heard ibn Umar say, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said. It was narrated that ibn Umar said, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, separated two members of Banu al-Ajlan, and said, Allah knows that one of you is lying. Will either of you repent? Sa'id ibn Jubayr said, I asked ibn Umar about Lahan, and he narrated a similar hadith as number 3749 from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. It was narrated that Sa'id ibn Jubayr said, Mus'ab did not separate the two who engaged in Lahan. Sa'id said, I mentioned that to Abdullah ibn Umar and he said, the Prophet of Allah, peace be upon him, separated the couple from Banu al-Ajlan. It was narrated from Ibn Umar that a man engaged in la'an with his wife at the time of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, separated them and attributed the child to his mother. It was narrated that Ibn Umar said, the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, asked a man of the Ansar and his wife to engage in la'an and he separated them. It was narrated from Ubaidullah with this chain, a hadith similar to number 3753. It was narrated that Abdullah said, We were in the masjid on the night of the Friday, when a man from among the Ansar came and said, If a man finds another man with his wife, and speaks of it, you will flog him, and if he kills him, you will kill him. But if he keeps quiet, he will be suppressing his rage. By Allah, I am going to ask the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, about it. The next day he went to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and asked him, saying, If a man finds another man with his wife, and speaks of it, you will flog him, and if he kills him, you will kill him. But if he keeps quiet, he will be suppressing his rage. And the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, O Allah, guide us to the ruling. And he started to supplicate. Then the verse of Li'an was revealed. And for those who accused their wives, but have no witnesses except themselves. Surah An-Nur, chapter 24, verse 6 and 7. Then that man was put to that test before the people. He and his wife came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and engaged in La'an. The man testified four times by Allah that he was telling the truth. Then the fifth time, he swore that the curse of Allah would be upon him if he was lying. Then she started to testify, and the Prophet peace be upon him said to her, Stop, but she insisted and carried on engaging in la'an. When they left, he said, Perhaps she will give birth to a curly-haired black child. And she did give birth to a curly-haired black child. A similar report as number 3755 was narrated from Al-A'mash with this chain. 
It was narrated that Muhammad said, I asked Anas ibn Malik about La'an, as I saw that he had knowledge of it. He said, Hilal ibn Umayyah accused his wife of committing zina with Sharik ibn Sahma, who was the brother of Al-Bara ibn Malik, on his mother's side. He was the first man to engage in La'an in Islam. He said, he engaged in La'an with her, and the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Watch her. If she brings forth a child who is white with straight hair and something wrong with his eyes, then he belongs to Hilal ibn Umayyah. And if she gives birth to a child who has dark eyelids, curly hair and lean calves, then he belongs to Sharik ibn Sahma. He said, I was told that she gave birth to a child that had dark eyelids, curly hair and lean calves. It was narrated that ibn Abbas said, Mention of La'an was made in the presence of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. Asim ibn Adai said something about that. Then he left. A man from among his people came to him and complained that he had found a man with his wife. Asim said, I am being tested with what I said. He took him to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and told him what he had found his wife doing. That man was sallow and lean, with straight hair and the one whom he claimed to have found with his wife had fleshy calves and was dark and bulky. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, O oh Allah, make it clear. Then she gave birth to a child who resembled the one who her husband said he found with her. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, made them engage in La'an. A man said to Ibn Abbas in that gathering, Was she the one about whom the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, if I were to have stoned anyone without evidence, I would have stoned this woman. Ibn Abbas said, No, that was a woman who continued to be a bad woman after becoming Muslim. It was narrated that Ibn Abbas said, Mention of the two who engaged in La'an was made in the presence of the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him. A hadith like that of al Layth number 3758. And he added, after saying bulky, with very curly hair. It was narrated that Al-Qasim ibn Muhammad said, Abdullah ibn Shaddad said, Mention of the two who engaged in La'an was made in the presence of Ibn Abbas. And Ibn Shaddad said, Are they the two of whom the Prophet peace be upon him said, If I were to stone anyone without proof, I would stone her? Ibn Abbas said, No. That was a woman who was infamous for her immoral conduct. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that Sa'd ibn Ubada al-Ansari said, O Messenger of Allah, do you think that if a man finds another man with his wife, he should kill him? The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, No. Sa'd said, But he would do that, by the one who honored you with the truth. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Listen, you people, to what your leader says. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that Sa'd ibn Ubadah said, O Messenger of Allah, if I find a man with my wife, should I let him be until I bring four witnesses? He said, Yes. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, Sa'd ibn Ubadah said, O Messenger of Allah, if I find a man with my wife, should I not touch him until I bring four witnesses? The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Yes. He said, No. By the one who sent you with the truth, I would hasten to him with my sword before that. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Listen, you people, to what your leader says. He is jealous, but I am more jealous than him, and Allah is more jealous than me. It was narrated that al mughir ibn Shorba said, Sa'd ibn Ubadah said, If I saw a man with my wife, I would strike him with my sword, and not with the flat side of it. News of that reached the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and he said, Are you surprised at the jealousy of Sa'd? By Allah, I am more jealous than him, and Allah is more jealous than me. It is because his jealousy that Allah forbade immoral deeds, both open and secret. There is no person who is more jealous than Allah, and there is no person to whom warnings are more beloved than Allah. Because of that, Allah sent the messengers as bearers of glad tidings and warnings. There is no person to whom praise is more beloved than Allah. Because of that, Allah made the promise of paradise. A similar report as number 3764 
was narrated from Abdul Malik ibn Umair with this chain. It was narrated that Abu Huraira said, A man from Banu Fazara came to the Prophet peace be upon him and said, My wife has given birth to a black boy. The Prophet peace be upon him said, Do you have camels? He said, Yes. He said, What are their colors? He said, Red. He said, Are there any dusky ones among them? He said, There are dusky ones among them. He said, Where does that come from? He said, Perhaps it is an inherited trait. He said, And perhaps this is an inherited trait. A hadith similar to that of Ibn Uyayna, number 3766, was narrated from az zuhray with this chain. Except that according to the hadith of Ma'mar, he said, O Messenger of Allah, my wife has given birth to a black boy, as if hinting that it was not his. And at the end of the hadith he said, and he did not allow him to deny the child. It was narrated from Abu Huraira that a Bedouin came to the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, and said, O Messenger of Allah, my wife has given birth to a black boy, and I am shocked, and I am not sure if he is mine. The Prophet, peace be upon him, said to him, Do you have camels? He said, Yes. He said, What are their colors? He said, Red. He said, Are there any dusky ones among them? He said, Yes. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, How is that? He said, Perhaps, O Messenger of Allah, that it is an inherited trait. The Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him, said, Perhaps this is also an inherited trait. It was narrated that Abu Huraira narrated a similar report as number 3766 from the Messenger of Allah, peace be upon him.